outpost of the British Isles. A little island off the Welsh coast, windswept and without harbor or landing place. No signs of human habitation, only the anchors and chains of wrecked ships line its treacherous seal-haunted coves. Its name was given to it by Norsemen a thousand years ago, and it is known as the home of one of the most amazing bird colonies in the world nesting place of the largest and finest seabird on the North Atlantic, the gannet, whose ability to fly home to its lonely breeding rock over thousands of empty miles of sea has established it as having the most uncanny sense of direction of any living creature. Seen from the air, Grasshome reveals itself as an isolated 20 acres of rock surrounded by sea. Although its coastline is entirely rock-bound, most of its surface is covered with the rich grass from whose green it derived its name. But to the northwest, the green is replaced by white, almost like snow. As you draw closer, the white patch resolves itself into a dazzling assembly of great white birds at their breeding place, acres of them. The birds in their nests are draped and garlanded about the rocky slopes and have invaded the smoother ground above, where they have killed the grass, leaving only bare soil. They're spread like a sheet over the surface. Thousands of them, on and on. What a bird it is. Designed as a perfect piece of living machinery for plunging after fish from a height with a wingspan of six feet. The beak, a delicate blue, but with a tooth of horn to hold the slippery fish when caught, it constitutes a most formidable weapon. The nostrils have grown over so that no water can be forced in as the bird dives. Its eyes have brilliant silvery pupils. Over them, a strong protecting membrane can be drawn. In contrast is the pale yellow of the head. Unlike most birds, the gannet can see directly forward, the better to look down for fish as he soars. The feet black with green stripes, all four toes joined by a single web for swift swimming underwater. The middle toe is furnished with a comb. The birds on the island spend most of their time sitting on their nests. Now and then one rouses itself to flap the laziness out of its system. What excitement! A mated pair express their emotion by ceremonial billing. The long beaks click against one another like rapiers. Such a bout may go on for three or four minutes. These ceremonies are just an expression of excitement and affection, and billing serves as an emotional bond between the mated birds. The chief enemies of the gannets on grass home are the seagulls. Here is a horde of them, and what an opportunity is theirs with nests left unprotected by their owners. It's not only eggs and young the robbers are after. When a gannet is frightened, it lightens itself for flight by pumping up the fish from the crop. It's the fish the gulls really prefer. How dainty is this gannet about his egg? At last, he comes back for it. Picks it up, breaks it, and begins to eat it, only to have it taken away from him by a stronger rival. You may ask, why don't the gannets drive the gulls away? because each is too busy sitting tight on its own precious offspring. Gannets only hatch one egg each year, but as they probably live for over 50 years, that's quite enough. Sometimes it's no joke taking their eggs. This man got a nasty wound from this bird whose egg was actually hatching. After being sat upon for six long weeks, the imprisoned chick breaks the shell a little bit at a time. At last, it's free to breathe the air, but still has to liberate its body. Exhausted, it lies quiet for a while, then makes a fresh effort. Until at last, it extricates itself entirely. chick is a naked, black, ugly thing and so weak that it can't hold up its head. In a few days, it has grown quite a little and the down begins to sprout. At 
this stage, it's provided with nostrils like any other bird. But quite soon, these are grown over in preparation for its later career as a diver. After a couple of weeks, it becomes entirely covered with white down and begins to look like a huge powder puff. However, this powder puff is provided with a powerful beak, and with it, it's quite capable of repelling most enemies. The feeding of the young is an extraordinary performance and takes place once or twice a day. The old birds far out to sea swallow the fish they've caught. When they are back, the young gannet, with feeble cries, begs for its food. Is this one being swallowed? No, the parent is only pumping up the fish from its crop, and the young gets busily to work until the old bird withdraws its head and gulps back what's left. Look, there it goes again. This alarming looking process is repeated at short intervals until the baby is satisfied, and at last the parent settles down quietly to brood. The downy young grows as big as its parents. At last, the flight feathers appear, but the first plumage is black instead of white. After four months of constant care, the parents suddenly desert their offspring. The young bird, conquered by hunger, throws itself at last into the air. Flight comes to it by instinct, and it manages to reach the sea safely, there to begin its independent life. This rock is called Bachelor's Island. It takes several years for the young gather to reach maturity, and here congregate the hundreds of non-breeding birds. In the air, the birds are all grace. Slow motion shows the full beauty and strength of their flight, an object lesson for the bird creations of man in aviation. In full flight, the gannet's legs and feet are entirely withdrawn below the surface of the soft plumage, plumage that is snow white with gold tinge to the neck and crown. Nature has endowed this bird with air sacs beneath the skin of the neck and breast, which they can fill with air to break the shock of their plunge when diving. These sacs seem to become automatically inflated while in flight, making the necks of the flying birds appear swollen. Round and round, the gannets fly in streamlined travel. The very poetry of motion. The circling flight goes on all day. The wondrous resources of nature afford no more beauteous scene than the graceful motion of this handsome bird in full flight. The sheer enjoyment of soaring through space. This is life. And now a shoal of fish has been sighted. The gannets have gathered and are ready for their plunge. Perpendicular diving is the gannets' most spectacular activity, the one for which their construction is especially designed. Now they're coming in at all angles, a regular bombardment of birds. The full beauty of a dive from midair upon the shoaling fish. Generally, they swallow their prey underwater, but now and again they bring it up in their beaks. Beneath the surface, their binocular-like vision penetrates the cloudiest water. Discovering a fish in the water below, the bird falls like a stone, often from a great height, using the wings at the last moment before striking the water with a tremendous splash. Then it swims swiftly underwater with the bubbles all around. This shoal happened to be close to the surface, but sometimes the fish are much deeper. Even so, the fish are not safe, for gannets have been caught by fishermen's nets a hundred feet down. Fishermen have learned to guide the setting of their nets by the way the gannets dive. If the birds are plunging vertically from a great height, it means the fish are deep. If they make short sideway dives, as here, the shoal is near the surface. In the entire world, this magnificent bird is known to have only 20 nesting places, but these harbor more than 150,000 breeding gannets. Whether this bird will maintain its present secure position is a question no one can now answer. Great storms at sea are probably its worst enemy. Floating refuse oil from oil-burning ships cause thousands to die miserable deaths. Nature and man may one day observe a truce with all such grand forms of wildlife toward the continued prosperity of that which gives us pleasure because of its grace and beauty. And so, once more, to Grassholm, with its snowy patch of gannets, 
expert airmen, skilled divers, and submarine hunters to say goodbye.